I love a clean and tidy pantry, but mine has gotten a little bit unruly, and that's because I've been buying a little bit more than usual with inflation. So when I see something that's on sale, especially if it's a shelf-stable item and something that I know is on regular rotation in my pantry, like dry pasta, etc., I will pick up a little bit more than usual. I might pick up like two or three. Whereas prior to this, I was really trying to lean in a direction that was more minimal. I was starting to buy things as I needed them and I would only buy one even if it was on sale but fear and preparation has gotten the best of me and I have been stocking up a little bit. That means my pantry has gotten to a state where I'm not quite sure what's in there I'm not sure what I have to use up, so I've been wanting to do this exercise for a while. And what's different about this pantry cleanout is that I'm going to be focusing on this more as a self-reflection exercise versus purely a tidying and organizing exercise. So I'm still going to be doing the tidying and organizing, but I'm also going to be asking questions like, what does my pantry say about me? How it's organized, what I keep in there, what I use, what I don't use, my shopping habits. Habits. I'm going to be thinking about all of that as I go through the contents of my pantry. Now the first thing you'll notice is that I'm standing in my kitchen. I don't actually have a fancy walk-in pantry. I live in a very small condo, so all of my pantry items, my shelf-stable items, are stored in the cupboards that are surrounding me. Everything is all over the place, but it's actually quite well organized by category, so I never have any issues finding what I'm looking for, but I do have an issue with remembering remembering what I have. I've got this upper cabinet that houses all of my canned goods, my baking supplies like sugar, salt, flour, etc. Then we've got this bottom cupboard which houses a lot of our starches. So these are things like rice, pasta, instant noodles, other types of grains, lentils, and that sort of thing. I've also got snacks in this cabinet. I've got dried fruit in here. And this cupboard also serves as a quasi liquor cabinet for us. And then we have a tiny narrow cupboard that is for our oils, soy sauce, and other sauces that aren't hot sauce. So these are more like cooking sauces versus hot sauce which is more of a condiment. I've also got tea and coffee in a separate cupboard and as well I have a pull-out drawer that houses all of our spices. The other thing that you'll notice is I don't really transfer things into different containers. I just keep them for the most part in the packaging that it comes in. So for example, spices, I don't transfer into spice jars and such. I used to do this when I first moved away from home in my late teens and early 20s. I wanted everything to be really organized and beautiful in my kitchen. So I did go out and buy all of those little tiny spice jars and I would transfer all the spices into the jars and label them. It was a lot of effort and I found that the spices went stale more quickly. Maybe it's because I introduced air into to the packaging when I was like pouring the spices into the little spice jar. So ever since that experiment that lasted a few years, I decided just to keep all of the spices in their original packaging and I found that this has actually helped with the freshness of the spices and I don't have to worry about trying to clean the spice jars every once in a while. Once I'm done with the spices, I can just toss the packaging. So that has worked out a lot better for me, but I do understand desire to have that beautiful aesthetic. Very organized pantry with everything in similar sized uh, containers. It looks beautiful. It's just not for me. So this is going to be a very, I would say like ordinary pantry clean out for an ordinary person with an ordinary kitchen. Since this is more of a self-reflection exercise for me, I'm going to be focusing this pantry clean out on one of my cupboards instead of doing them all. I'm going to be going into the bottom cupboard that is very cavernous because this is giving me the most discomfort. I'm feeling a lot of discomfort about not knowing what's in there and not having a good inventory per se. And speaking of inventory, I have tried to take an Excel inventory of the contents, but I just don't update it enough, so I have scrapped that as well. I'm just gonna try to keep everything in my brain, and of course, everything will be on this video as well.
I have emptied the cabinet and now I can show you how cavernous it is. So it's really easy to lose stuff in this cabinet, but I do love it because it holds a lot of stuff. Here's all the food that I pulled out of the cupboard, and we'll go into more detail about each of the different categories I have here and sort through everything. We also keep our pots and pans in this cupboard, as well as a salad spinner and some takeout food containers that hubby uses for his lunch. We have more alcohol in the cupboard than I expected, which is kind of silly because hubby and I don't really drink anymore. We only drink on the rare occasion, so I will be trying to use all of this stuff up whether it be in cooking or maybe making mulled wine or just having a drink here and there. Most of the items have been opened and are in partial states of being finished. I'm starting to naturally move away from alcohol because it doesn't make me feel great. I'm not at the point where I want to cut it out completely though, so I won't be tossing all of this alcohol. Instead, I am going to try to use it up gradually. Even as I was pulling things out of the cupboard, I'm already noticing some patterns that I want to talk about. But before I do that, I'm going to separate everything in into different categories so I can talk about each one separately. I've separated all of our grains, cereals, starches and that sort of thing into this grouping of foods here. The only exception is this dried seaweed which I use to make dashi from time to time. There are a few things that I notice when I look at this collection of goods. The first is that I have a lot of oats. I've got three unopened packages as well as this container which is rolled oats mixed with steel cut oats which was the mix that I was using for hubby's overnight oats. Hubby was taking overnight oats for his lunch every single workday until just recently, about maybe a couple months ago, he told me he was ready for a change. He was sick of overnight oats. So we switched up his lunches to sous vide chicken and roasted veggies. And I talk about that a little bit more in my Sunday reset video, but I had stocked up on all of these oats because they were on sale. I mean, they don't expire until September 2024, but I would like to use them up a bit sooner. So what I've been doing is I've been making many batches of granola, and this is a batch that I made just a couple of days ago that I am working my way through. I just eat around half a cup with some non-dairy milk in the morning, and I'm really enjoying that. So I've got to use up the mix that I prepared for his overnight oats. I'll just use this to make granola and then eventually I will use these up as well. And the other thing that I've noticed and this is I think a good thing, I only have one unopened package of split peas. Everything else is pretty much opened and partially used up. This surprised me. I have two packages of green lentils that are open, so I must have at some point thought I was out and I opened a fresh one, but I actually had some remaining. One thing that did surprise me is that I don't have any packages of pasta, aside from instant noodles, which I have a nice supply of, as well as um, this, which is, I can't remember what this is called, but it's that tiny orzo pasta I think it is so I've got that and some oven ready lasagna but not enough to make an actual lasagna so I'll need to buy more of this if I want to use this up and I've got two random boxes of stovetop stuffing because they were on sale near Canadian Thanksgiving and I love stovetop stuffing. I thought I might make it as a side dish for dinner one evening and I haven't used them yet, but they will again come in handy as we move into the colder months. And then in terms of rice, I've been keeping it very minimal. I haven't been buying those huge bags of rice that take up quite a bit of space in my cupboards. Instead, I've been buying this sort of size, which were partially through. I've got some 
rice for risotto here and then I've got this um, little package of basmati rice that's unopened that we actually got as a sample somewhere and I don't remember where but it's a nice decent size and this is great basmati rice so we will definitely use that I think I'm in decent shape with the uh, pasta and grains and rice I'm actually very surprised I was really worried that I had more but I have been actively trying to work through stuff and looking at everything in this sort of format all laid out gives me a lot of ideas for ways I could use this stuff up. I've started to put a few things away just to make some counter space so I can show you the rest of the items that I pulled out of this bottom cupboard. Before I put these grains away I wanted to show you a few things that I did in terms of changing up storage so I can use them potentially more quickly. I'm storing everything kind of like Comrie style in these old Holt Renfrew boxes. I consolidated the two open bags of green lentils into this container. As I mentioned before, I don't typically transfer stuff into separate containers as a standard, but since I had this container empty and I had two open bags of green lentils, I decided just to pop them in here when I tried to fit everything in one bag and it was pretty full. It was hard to clip shut. I'm glad um, everything is nice and organized now. I am going to try to use up a bunch of stuff over the next few months and maybe I'll keep you updated in my vlog. Next we've got a bunch of nuts and dried fruit and crackers and such. So these are starting to move into the snack category but I'm showing these separately because I have a lot of other snacks. This also also kind of borders on baking in a way because I did buy these honey graham wafers to make a pumpkin pie which I will do just not sure when <laughs> maybe over the holidays I've got some crystallized ginger that I use for granola as well as some shredded coconut also for granola just some little bits and pieces of dried fruit raisins and then I've got lots of nuts for us to snack on and as well hubby was putting this in his overnight oats so I've got an abundance of unopened packages of nuts with the exception of the peanuts which I should probably pop in the fridge. Where I have always been a bit excessive is in the snacks category and indeed we have a lot of snacks. A lot of this is because we were recently on several road trips. We do tend to buy snacks for our drive so the chips and such are left over from that. We've got two unopened bags of Miss Vicky's and we've also got two open bags of chips that we were eating on our way home from Ottawa. We also bought a bunch of snacks while we were on our road trip, just like things to bring back home from chocolate shops and such. These are some milk chocolate covered almonds that I also bought. I was craving chocolate covered almonds, but we never ended up opening them because we had other things to eat and I was always full. Gummy candies from our road trip and a few other bits and bobs from like all over the place. All different reasons why we have these things. I've got a huge batch of um, Hello Writer chocolate here. I tend to use these for baking so I will be doing some holiday baking soon. So I've got lots of chocolate to use here as well as here. I don't love dark chocolate so when I get like a dark chocolate bar I usually tend to use that for baking. A lot of these are small packages and hubby and I share so once we start eating things we tend to go through them rather quickly. I do have three Ritter Sports staring at me right now. These were on sale. They were three for like a certain price so I bought three of course. These uh, wafer sticks in the ube flavor and pandan flavor. We bought them at a Filipino grocery store when we went to Brampton to see my in-laws. So we've just collected a lot of bits over the past little while, snacky bits. I'm super grateful that we have all of these snacks, but it does feel a little bit overwhelming. So I think I will try to get through these before I buy more, especially seeing everything laid out in front of me with such abundance. And I'm gonna be starting our advent calendar, so we probably won't get to a lot of these things until maybe after the holidays. Of course, we will eat some before the holidays, but um, December really is a lot of advent calendar treats. So yeah, we've got a lot here. These are the last three items I'm gonna show you from my pantry. I've got an unopened bottle of maple syrup, 
unopened almond milk and also some dried white fungus that I've had for a while. I was going to use this to make a Chinese sweet soup with ginger and rock sugar, but I haven't done so yet. I'm going to give it one more chance. If I don't use it up by the end of the year, I'm going to let it go. I'm all done with my pantry clean out and even with the time that I spent filming, it took about an hour, so it wasn't too much of a time commitment and I'm feeling Feeling really good about how things are organized now. The cupboard still looks very full because I have a lot of stuff that I keep in there but I'm really happy to say that it's very organized and I have a good mental picture of the things that I want to use up. I'm really happy that pretty much all of the food fit on the top shelf of the cupboard. So the bottom shelf only has the maple syrup in terms of a food item. It's also got the alcohol. Everything else is like pots and pans. Throughout this exercise I definitely noticed that I am still a bit of a hoarder when it comes to food. I've gone through many phases of my life where I've built up huge collections of things. So things like handbag, makeup, skincare, that sort of thing. If you follow my channel, you'll know that I have had a lot of these different iterations of overstocking on things or overbuying, over collecting, whatever you want to call it. And I definitely still do that with food, especially shelf stable food that I know I will use up or that I think I will use up. So a few little thoughts and potential lessons that I have for myself when I did this exercise is to be really careful about what I buy. I do tend to use things up like pasta and rice but specialty grains I need to buy a bit more sparingly because I don't tend to use those as often. I just don't think of them as often and I don't have as many go-to recipes as I do for like pasta and rice dishes. So the next time I try a new grain I think I'd like to try maybe one package at a time, finish that and then purchase a different type or maybe that same type again. I also realized that I do not like to waste food. So when I was taking out the items and putting them on the counter, I had an idea of things that I might want to let go of. And one thing that popped up for me was definitely that package of dried white fungus. I was like, you know what, I'm going to finally let this go. I've had it for many years. I haven't used it. But even as I was getting ready to record that clip and I was looking at the item and getting ready to say that I'm going to let it go, I felt this resistance and that's when I decided I would give it one last effort. I have a real hard time with that. I can definitely let go of things that have gone moldy. Fortunately, because I don't buy as many perishable items as I used to, that doesn't happen as often as it did before. But with shelf stable stuff, even if it's past the expiry date, and even if I know I've had it for many years, I will still use it unless it smells off or unless like something about it is telling me not to use it. I will still keep it and try to use it. So that's something that I want to move away from. I know I'm not going to be the type of person who will ever be super comfortable with wasting food. So that just means I have to buy less. And that's really a lesson that I'm trying to internalize because I can say it to you all I want and I can tell myself that all I want. But sometimes there's a disconnect between my words and my behavior. And that's something that I'm trying to work on. I don't want to be someone who hoards food. I don't want to be someone who has food for many, many years before using it. I want to have a more just in time inventory system, a more like first in first out inventory system when it comes to food. And while I'm good with some categories of food, I still tend to overbuy. I buy with the intention that I'm going to use it up in the next little while, but I'm not really realistic with myself in terms of um, this actually isn't a staple item for me. It's more of a fun experimental item. And that's where I think I need to be a little bit more diligent in terms of my shopping behavior. And of course, these aren't like big ticket items. I'm not spending a lot of money on these things, but still it doesn't feel good for me to waste food. So that's something I really want to work on moving forward, especially now that I'm reflecting after doing this exercise. I think that was the main thing that I noticed when going through the items in my pantry. The other thing that I know I do is I rationalize a lot of the things that I have on hand. So when I was talking through the processed snacks portion of the video, I did talk about, you know, a lot of these things were from road trips, or this is why I have this, or this is why I have that. And I don't really need to to do that. It makes me feel better about having more, but 
I know I'm gonna use up the snacks. That's going to be no problem <laughs> whatsoever. So I don't think I need to constantly be rationalizing why I have so much, especially in those areas. Beans, lentils, and grains. I mean, I know I don't use that stuff up. The white fungus, I know I don't use that stuff up. So I can try to not buy as much. But with the snacks and such, I really don't mind having a little bit more because hubby and I do go through it. And we've gotten to a point where we don't overindulge in it either. We'll just have a little bit and then we'll put it away. And speaking for myself personally, I've gotten a lot better at not being fixated on snacks. When I used to have snacks, I would think about them until I finished them. I got to a point where I didn't even want to buy them because I knew if I had them, I wouldn't be able to not think about them. I wouldn't be able to move past the idea that these snacks are waiting to be consumed in my cupboard. So I've really worked on that over the years and gotten to a place where I can have processed snacks in my cupboard. I don't feel any sort of way about it in terms of needing to eat it right away. I can slowly eat it over time, but I do still tend to rationalize because I still have these judgments on what foods are good versus bad, but I don't want to do that anymore. I want to think of all food as food, be grateful for all of the food that I have access to. And that means being more neutral about food in general, in terms of what's good for me or what's bad for me, what's healthy, what's unhealthy. So that's something that really came up for me as I was going through this exercise, the rationalization of having processed snacks. That really showed me that I still feel like I need to justify or explain why I have this food, why I buy this this food, why I continue to eat this food, and I don't want to do that anymore. I spent a lot of time in my 20s and 30s trying to cut out processed snacks and just beating myself up for it when I would eat it, and I finally moved past that in terms of like the internal struggle that I have, but I still feel this pressure to justify and explain and I'm gonna try to let that go. I think those are the main things that came up for me during this exercise. I really enjoyed it, and now I have a clean and tidy bottom cupboard <laughs> to show for it. I will be doing the rest of my kitchen during my 30 days to spring deep cleaning challenge. I'm really looking forward to that as well. I do that every year. I think I may need to adjust the dates this year though, because uh, hubby and I have a trip planned in February, but I'll post more details about that when I have them. That is going to be it for this video. This pantry exercise was part of my new book, Authenticity Reset. I am currently in the middle of the food chapter and having so much fun with it. So if you'd like to check out this exercise as well as the rest, I will leave the link to my book down below. Or of course, you can just do your own pantry clean out without having the self-reflection. But I do find the self-reflection portion is really helpful, especially if you want to make changes to some of your habits and routines. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back very soon with another one. Until then, please take care and bye for now.